crack. Welcome to today's episode. My name is David Kelly. I'm the Irish Guy Vlog. So I'm here today at Money in Church in Kilbaha. I'm just about to go inside the church and inside is housed what's become to be known as the Little Lark. And this is it. This little box, this little shack, no bigger than a garden shed, has caused years and years of controversy here in Kilbaha. This is its story. So you might be wondering how this little box caused so much trouble here in Kilbaha. So let me tell you. Our story starts back in 1851 with a local priest by the name of Father Michael Meehan. Father Meehan approached the local landlord by the name of Mr. Westby and asked him for a plot of land to put a church on. Mr. Westby flat out refused, leaving Father Meehan and all the locals have to travel five miles to the local church, which none of them could actually do because they didn't have transport. But Father Meehan wasn't really disappointed by this because he knew that he had another plan. He managed to get two houses together. In those two houses he would gather all these people and it was from those two houses he would say his mass. But when a local landlord by the name of Marcus Keane found out about this, he evicted Father, Father Meehan from the house along with all of these people and he just left the houses unused. Father Meehan knew from this point that this actually wasn't about the land. This was a personal attack. This was religious oppression. This was bigotry coming from the landlords. And also, this was 25 years after the penal laws in Ireland had been lifted, so Catholics legally could buy land, but they just weren't allowed to because of the landlords. They really didn't want them to have land, and they didn't want them to have a place to be able to worship. At the time when Father Meehan came to the parish, there was a lot of religious conflict here. You see, it was just after the famine, there was still a lot of poverty here in West Clare. People were still very badly off. Other religious movements started coming in, and I think they called them proselytism or proselytism, whatever it is. I'd never heard this word before, but this word, whatever it is, it's basically other religious movements come into an area and they try to lure people over to their side, either by offering them soup from the soup kitchens, education for their children and clothing and stuff like that. There was one of those movements here in Kilbaha. They would come to the Catholics who were dying and starving on the side of the roads and they would offer them soup and clothing and stuff for their children. And I mean, if you're on the side of the road and your children are dying in your arms, it doesn't matter what God comes to you, you are going to worship that God. It doesn't matter. It was manipulation of the highest order. And of course, some of the Catholics, they took the soup. The entire movement became known as superism. If you took the soup, you became known as a super. And you might have actually heard the phrase, taking the soup, which is kind of like the old day equivalent of drinking the Kool-Aid, to me anyway at least. So Father Meehan really was up against it, with the religious groups on one side of him and the angry landlords on the other side. He was stuck in the middle and he had no place to go. It was in this time, with pressure from both sides, that Father Meehan had his eureka idea. So he approached a local carpenter by the name of Owen Collins with an idea. An idea to build an altar for his congregation to gather around. By this time the landlords knew what Father Meehan was up to. They knew he was looking for land. Any tenants that the landlords had didn't allow them to rent land to Father Meehan or any of his followers. But this didn't stop Father Meehan from continuing. So work continued on the ark. It took two weeks in total. It's just four basic walls, a couple of windows, a tar-pitched roof. But there was one secret that the Ark had that nobody was expecting. You see, the Ark was now mobile. It was hoisted up onto wheels and it could be moved anywhere. You might be thinking that it, it didn't make a difference if they had an altar. They didn't have any land to put the altar on. And you would be right in one sense. You see, in Ireland there are places that even landlords can't own. And this is the bit between the shoreline when the tide goes out and when the tide goes in. And this is called no man's land. And this is where Father Meehan decided to take his stand. Armed with the lark, Father Meehan and his congregation they would wheel it out of Kilbaha village, across the sand and the stones, out onto no man's land, every single Sunday. And it was here for the first time they could practice their faith, they could be themselves and worship in peace for the first time in a long time. And the landlords absolutely hated it. They hated the fact that Father Meehan had got one over on them. They really didn't like it. I would have loved to have seen the landlords' grubby little faces at how angry they were at knowing that Father Meehan had got one over on them. And of course the landlords started to fight back in any way they could. They brought Father Meehan to court on two occasions because he was causing a nuisance by wheeling the ark around the place. I mean, petty, absolutely petty. But Father Meehan won the case twice. And they really, really tried to take him down. They tried anything they could, but they couldn't touch him. He was untouchable. And this continued on for five years. Every Sunday, Father Meehan and his followers would be out on the beach. Come rain, snow or shine, they would be out there on no man's land. People were baptised there, people were christened there, people got married, people were remembered there on this little shack on the beach in no man's land. The crazy and sad thing about this is that this is what people had to do just to practice their faith. Because of the bigotry of the landlords, because of the control they had over the people, these are the lengths that people had to go to just to be themselves. 
And if you know me personally, you'll know I'm not religious. I don't subscribe to any religion. I was raised Catholic, but I know I'm no longer religious. So I'm not taking Father Me inside because he's a Catholic. I'm not taking his side because he was the underdog. I'm taking his side because he was oppressed for no reason. His beliefs weren't hurting anyone. He wasn't doing anything bad. He just wanted to be himself and practice his faith. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But obviously the landlords didn't like it. And it wasn't until five years after the Ark was built that Father Meehan was finally given a plot of land to build a church in. And this is the church I'm standing in today. It's now become known as the Church of the Little Ark. And the thing I admire most about Father Meehan is that he never stopped fighting for what he believed in. He stood up for himself, he stood up for his people. He never stooped to the level of the landlords. He stood his ground and he outsmarted them. The first time he wheeled out that cart onto no man's land and realised that it was actually going to work. I mean, he must have walked home that night holding his chin high, you know. Like, he must have felt amazing because he knew. He knew that he had found a good plan and he knew that it was going to work. So Father Meehan's work continued in the parish for another 20 years after the ark was built. He died in 1878 and he's remembered here on the wall. He's buried within feet of the Ark, which was his masterpiece, his swan song. And I think it's nice that he's remembered here. And that I think it's nice that he'll be remembered just as much as the Ark because, you know, he was the creator, he was the brains behind us. I know it's only a wooden shack. It's four basic walls. But these walls and the determination of Father Meehan changed Irish history. Sometimes that's all it takes is for one person to say, no, I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to express myself, and I'm going to be who I want to be. And I guess the lesson to take away from this, if you do want to take a lesson away from it, is not to judge people based on what they believe. Just because we believe different things doesn't mean we can't be friends, doesn't mean that we're entirely different. I mean, part of what makes the world special is that everyone has different opinions. We're all here sharing the same mystery together. We're all clueless. We're all in it together. And if you are religious, don't go around shoving soup down people's throats, because that's just really not cool. If you're happy in your own beliefs, that should be enough. Now I really want a bowl of soup. <laughs> that was the story of the little lark. I really hope you enjoyed it. Nice little history video I thought for this week, you know. If you do want to come and see the little lark, it's here in Kilbaha village in West Clare. But I think the story behind it is powerful and that's why I wanted to make a video about it today. And that's it for me for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my channel and you like my content, don't forget to subscribe down below. Leave me a comment, like the video, whatever you want to do. I really appreciate it. It really helps my channel to grow. So I'm here editing the video and I realized that I didn't really say goodbye. So here I am. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for watching. I really do appreciate it. I know it's a little bit different from my normal videos, but uh, I think the story is interesting. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all again next week with another video. Bye.